Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I'm currently an Astrodynamics software engineer and I'm a Cambridge Mathematics graduate. And today I'm going to be doing a question and answer video. I put a story on Instagram basically just saying that I'm fancying filming a bit of a Q&A just so people that are new to my channel and new to my Instagram page get to know a little bit more about me. And I got a lot of questions, so yeah, I'm gonna pick out some of them today and hopefully answer a couple others in some Instagram stories as well. So if you're interested in that, then check it out. But yeah, let's dive straight into the video. So the first question that I got was, from which uni did you graduate? So I actually graduated from two different universities. The first was the University of Leeds, and that was a mathematics degree. And then I went on to do a master's, which was part three of the mathematical tripos at the University of Cambridge. And I graduated from that last year now. It's coming up to two years, but I say last year because I'm trying to cling on to the fact that I still want to be a student. But yeah, that's where I graduated from and I absolutely loved both of my courses. The next question was, how do you have fun in your meantime? Let me think of like the non-nerdy response to that and then I'll nerd out. I really enjoy bouldering, which is basically a form of climbing, but without ropes. And I really, really like that. I kind of got into it a bit. I think there was like a free taster session, a climbing gym, in my undergrad and my housemates and I went and I just fell in love with it. I thought it was so cool. And yeah, I've just kind of continued with that over the last few years and I really enjoy it. So I like to boulder in my spare time. I also, I'm trying to get back into running. I was running quite consistently last summer and I really enjoyed it. I mean, I love any form of sport. I used to race motorbikes. Sadly, I can't do that anymore. If I could still do it, I would do it. I really, really enjoyed that. That was one of my favorite hobbies, but sadly I can't do it anymore. If you're interested in why, there's a separate video on my last Q and A <laughs> about why that is. And yeah, I don't know, sports, I really, I'm quite like to be quite an active person. I quite like anything adrenaline focused. And yeah, that's, that's it for the sport side of things. I guess hanging around with my friends, I really enjoy just like meeting up with my friends, meeting up with my family. So my sisters, my parents and my nan. Yeah, I really enjoy spending time with my family. And then the nerdy stuff, I guess, is I spend a lot of time reading maths, physics, space, you know, astrophysics, uh, books like that. I spend a lot of time researching into the YouTube videos that I put on my channel. And it's quite hard to balance that with a full-time job because I spend my full-time job as a astrodynamic software engineer for a space company. And at the moment we're currently working towards a MVP release of the software and I'm the only backend developer. So I'm kind of answering a separate question here for anybody that asks me what I do in my, in my job. Yeah, I, I'm a backend developer, I'm the only one. So there's a lot of work going into that. So I spend my entire days coding at work and I love it, I absolutely love to code. And if I get to code in my spare time, I also like to do that as well. I just love to do anything that's related to maths, physics, space, tech, coding, and just doing some outreach for trying to get people into the world of space and tech and maths yeah that's pretty much what I do in my meantime so somebody asked me was it your childhood dream to graduate in astronomy and I think this is the thing with my Instagram channel is because I basically post about what I do at work and I work for a space company it's very astrodynamic related a lot of people assume that I actually graduated in you know astronomy or astrophysics and that's not the case. I did mathematics. For those of you that have been around long enough on my YouTube channel, you'll know that I did mathematics. And I guess, was it was it my childhood childhood dream? Do you know, it, it actually wasn't, which is, is crazy. A lot of people kind of grow up and think, oh, I want to be an astronaut from when they're little. And then, you know, they go on and try to do it. My A-levels, so the equivalent of what you take at 17 and 18 in the UK, I didn't actually take physics. I, I took mathematics, further maths, English literature, financial studies and theatre studies. I used to love acting, which I don't do anymore. And it's a bit different to what <laughs> I do now. So I didn't do physics and I, I really enjoyed maths. There was definitely a turning point for me and I'm gonna be releasing a video on how I went from really struggling with maths and how I went from like hating maths to going and doing it as a degree. So that'll be coming on my channel soon. But I just didn't think that I could get into the space industry really with a maths degree because you go to university and you hear careers, people talk. The only options really are finance, go, go into finance and teaching was another one. And I, there are a few others kind of dotted around 
maths degrees per se and I thought they were the only options for me so I genuinely was considering in my first year of university oh I'll just become an actuary or you know I'll, I'll be an accountant or I'll do all these other things you know data science data analytics stuff like that because that's what I thought was the only option for a math student and then I did an internship in my second year of university with the UK Space Agency's Space Placements and Industry Scheme, which was incredible. I absolutely love that. And I'm a massive advocate for that programme and that scheme. And I try and promote it as much as I can because I had the best time on it. And that was the first glimpse of, OK, I am a math student and I can actually get into the space industry. And then from then on, my confidence grew. I guess I, I just thought, more and more about what I wanted to do in the space industry, what impacts I wanted to have, and that's led me to where I am now. So was my childhood dream to do a degree in astronomy? No, it wasn't. But did I think five years ago now that this is where I would be in the future? No, not at all. And I think that's what's quite nice about the space industry is so many different people from different backgrounds can get into it. Somebody then asked a shocking fact about you. Uh, I, actually, <laughs> um, I don't really have any shocking facts. Let me think. The <laughs> What I'm going to say is one that all of my friends who know me very well and my family will know that this is coming and I'm going to give them a second to say it out loud because I know this is what they're going to say. And it's either that I had a head injury or that I have a bit of metal in my arm from both of them from racing motorbikes. Um, and I'm not going to dive into the details, but a shocking fact, I've got two plates in my humerus bone and about 21 screws or something ridiculous like that but yeah they're, they're the they're the two shocking facts the next question was what is your book list recently so my book list i will check my goodreads i do have a goodreads and i will link it below so i read a book which was called i think like discovering the cosmos or something and it said how mathematics unveiled the universe i really liked it it wasn't a lot of maths in there which i was hoping there would be but it was it was still a really nice book nevertheless and i'm also currently reading radical candor which i don't know if anyone's heard of it but it's, it's quite a, a famous book and it's basically just about how to work well in a workplace and this book has been really quite insightful into how you treat people how you don't treat people and obviously I understand how you, how you treat people generally but there are very like nice subtleties in it and if anybody is working in a full-time job I recommend reading the book because it's it's very insightful so that's what I'm currently reading if you're interested in what I've read then I've got a good read so you can check that out somebody asked how do you manage a personal slash social life with YouTube and your full-time job <laughs> that's a good question I typically try and film my YouTube videos on a Saturday morning and then spend the kind of remainder of the week editing just random times after work and stuff. I do quite a lot, I, I won't lie. I try not to burn myself out. I think that's the, the main thing is, you know, at work I work incredibly hard and particularly when I work from home, I work a lot harder. I think that's just because there's less distractions, but I am mindful of making sure I take breaks when I need to and just having a plan. I think that's the main thing for me is I plan out probably a month in advance and try and organise stuff in between. It does get quite hectic at times, I won't lie. So in answer to your question, how do I manage it all? A very good plan, I would say. And what I actually go by is never doing something that I don't enjoy because then it turns from a hobby that you're passionate about to work. But I don't want to burn myself into the ground outside of a nine to five job because that's stressful and that's just going to lead to burnout. So I always make sure that what I'm doing is stuff that I enjoy. And I'm very fortunate that I enjoy doing my YouTube and doing all the videos for it. So yeah, a very good plan and making sure I enjoy everything that I do. Okay, I'm going to try to speed this up and get through as many as I can because <laughs> there's quite a lot on here. So do you play Minecraft or any other video games? I don't actually play video games. I don't really have time to play video games especially with YouTube, but I don't enjoy gaming as much as I do sitting and coding. I can sit and code and my attention span is like switched on, but with gaming I struggle a little bit and it's probably because I've never tried any fun games, I guess. So yeah, I don't game unfortunately and I've never played Minecraft, which might come as a shock to a lot of people. So tell me in the comments if you think I should play Minecraft and I'll make a video <laughs> on me playing it. Somebody asked, could you please tell us the tool that you're using for satellite orbit simulations? 
So this is really cool because I post this on my Instagram story and I'll show a picture of it here. And this is the software that I'm actually building at my work. We're building a simulation tool for satellite propagation, satellite orbits, and it's so cool. As I said, I'm the only backend developer on it. So there's a lot of responsibility. So the tool that you're talking about is a tool that I'm building and it's so cool. I really, really love it. And I'm learning a heck of a lot. The front end team and my manager are just, yeah, incredible. Somebody asked if you did anything differently what would you do in terms of your career and degree, etc.? What would I do differently? I think I would probably just try and immerse myself in more knowledge and learn more, which I know I did a lot of, and I think maybe if I did even more, I probably would have burnt out. I sit here now and I think back to university and think back to all the other courses and stuff that I could have learned. And it would have been nice to, even though I couldn't take them because you were only allowed to take so many credits each year and I maxed my credits out each, each year at university, it would have been nice to just ask for the lecture notes and then read them in my spare time because there's so many areas of maths that I... I genuinely find so interesting and there's so many areas in the STEM world that I want to learn about. My like desire to learn and to grow and to just gain knowledge is quite infectious and I just there's so many areas that I want to learn about so I think that's probably one thing I would say that I wish I did differently is just asking lecturers for their lecture notes and reading them in my spare time which sounds so nerdy I know but yeah I, I just love learning. This was interesting somebody said do you wish you had studied an engineering major rather than maths and why not if if that's the case. I, I don't actually I loved my maths degree I think it was the degree most suited to me and I get to do engineering now in my job and, and I learn a lot about engineering but what I've noticed with engineering is it doesn't go into the rigorous mathematics as much as a maths degree and for me I, I love the elegance of like proofs and just learning about maths so for me a maths degree was better suited to me I think I would have really enjoyed doing an engineering degree but I don't regret taking a maths degree I, I had the best time of my life and I learned a lot and I think I learned a lot that helped me go into engineering because I had already learned the maths behind you know, how things worked. So yeah, I, I don't regret taking a maths degree. Somebody asked, how's your 2024 been so far? It's been, it's been really good. I've really enjoyed it. It's been very busy, very hectic, lots to do at work. You know, we've got a release for this MVP software coming up soon. So very busy at work, trying to see as much of my friends as possible. The next few months are so busy I've got so many things planned and I'm also just trying to get YouTube stuff uh, going and rolling and getting some content out for you all so yeah it's been very busy but really good okay I'm going to finish on three questions that I've got left there have been so many questions that you've asked and I, I want to answer them all but I'm going to be here for, for hours if I do so I will do my best I might do a part two so if you're interested comment down below if you want to ask any more questions and I'll do another Q&A but the First of the three questions said, favorite part three course. So part three was the master's course that I did. Uh, and this actually came from one of my friends that I made on the course. And yeah, what was the favorite part three course that I did? Dynamics of Astrophysical Discs. I really enjoyed that. I had a great lecturer for it. Really, really enjoyed that. I loved astrophysical fluid dynamics as well. That was so fun. But I also really enjoyed, it was like extra, extra solar planets atmospheres and interiors that was it I didn't need to look I remembered it yeah that was one of my favorites just because it was something different to what I did it was less mathematical I didn't love it because of the maths in it although that was really fun I loved it because I was learning something new and something space related so yeah I mean I, I've chosen my top three there which doesn't really answer my favorite but those were my favorites <laughs> the next question was your inspiration so who is my inspiration so in terms of famous figures Katherine Johnson has always been a massive inspiration for me. If you haven't seen the film Hidden Figures, then I recommend you watch it. Just an incredible mathematician and has always been a, a role model for me. I'm inspired by people that I spend time with, so my friends and, and my family. So all three of my sisters, I'm inspired by them because they work so hard at what they do and they have their own little kind of businesses and little things that they do. And I'm inspired by them because I see them working hard and I want to work hard. Same with my parents as well. Um, I've always been inspired by my mum and my dad. They have always been massive inspirations to me, as has my nan as well. And my friends around me, I, I have such incredible friends and I see them all excelling in their careers. And I see these role models, you know, these public figures as inspiration but I try and look a little bit closer to home and, and look at my friendships and my family and see what they do and kind of gain inspiration from them because it's more personal in that way. But like I said, if it was a public figure, it would be Katherine Johnson. And I've explained that in another video as well. The very final question was my favorite space related movie, which I guess is, this is really bad. I haven't actually watched a lot of movies 
which is shocking because there's so many great maths and space movies out there. So while I'm doing this series on my YouTube channel where I'm saying solving maths in this movie, I these are the films that I've actually watched, but I, there's a lot out there that I still need to watch to make videos on. So yeah, my favourite space related movie is probably Hidden Figures. I just love it because of the empowerment uh, of Katherine Johnson and, and the other characters in it, particularly from a, a woman in STEM point of view, but the film itself is, is fantastic. So that was the q and I have spent a while filming this. There are so many great questions that I wish I got around to answering, but if you want to ask them in the comment section of this YouTube video, I will do my best to answer them for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.